Hey, everybody. It's Dr. Brown from Idaho BMI and Ephra Surgical Institute. I wanted to create a video to talk about what I think is a very important topic, and that is the vagus nerve. Now, a lot of people are familiar with the concept of the gut-brain connection. The brain and the intestinal tract are intimately connected, always communicating with each other. Well, the vagus nerve is a very important nerve, longest nerve in the body. It connects the brain to the gastrointestinal tract. The vagus nerve is the primary pathway for signals between the brain and the gut. Extremely important. Um, you think of a supercomputer, these rooms at Google or, or some uh, IBM uh, facility, some massive supercomputer. Well, these enormously powerful computers require an input in order to control them and direct them. Well, the vagus nerve is the primary input into the supercomputer of the brain as it relates to the gut-brain connection. Now, I want to introduce an idea, and that is surface area. Um, how do we interact with the world around us? Well, we, we have our eyes, which see, our ears that hear, our skin. And if you think about surface area, how big are those structures? The skin, it's estimated that an adult male has about 1.9 square meters of skin or 20 square feet. Uh, but potentially the biggest structure that we have that's interacting with the world around us is our gastrointestinal tract. It's estimated that from mouth to the bottom, an average person has about 400 square feet of surface area in the gastrointestinal tract. And many would consider anything inside of our intestines like the food that we eat and the bacteria in our gut as actually technically outside of us. It just happens to be that it's going through the middle of us, but it's exterior. So in a very real way, our gastrointestinal tract is potentially our most powerful sensor for the world around us. And pretty much the whole stretch of that GI tract is exquisitely sensitive, has all kinds of different cell types that are there to sense and detect, detect what's inside of the gastrointestinal tract. You know, most taste receptors that we have are actually in the gut, not in our mouth. Incredibly important. Well, it turns out that about 90%, 80-90% of the signals going through that vagus nerve are sensory signals going from the gastrointestinal tract into the brain. So the vagus nerve is, it is the primary sensory pathway into the brain. And in the brain are all the controls for weight and appetite, metabolism, cravings, blood glucose, hunger pains, cholesterol. Uh, the import of information into the brain is incredibly important. If that's problematic, if it doesn't work, you're going to have issues with the control in the brain. The vagus nerve is one of what we call the cranial nerves. These are nerves that leave the base of the skull to different structures. And the vagus nerve is cranial nerve number 10. Well, if you think about some of the other cranial nerves and what happens when say there's a problem or that nerve doesn't function, I think it's helpful to understand what's going on with the vagus nerve. So vagus nerve number one is the olfactory nerve. This is the nerve that uh, takes smell information or data into the brain. You cut that olfactory nerve, you can't smell. The second cranial nerve is the optic nerve. And as the name implies, this has to do with optics or vision. And if you cut that optic nerve, a person is blind. Well, cranial nerve 10, the vagus nerve. What happens when the vagus nerve is not functioning? Person becomes obese, develops diabetes, cardiovascular disease. The vagus nerve is incredibly important. And that is really an important factor in the pandemic of obesity and diabetes.
Uh, in the modern world with the foods that we eat, people have what I would consider and many others consider vagal neuropathy, meaning that vagus nerve is not working well and signals from the gastrointestinal tract are not getting through into the brain. In the media, you hear a lot about different types of fat or maybe better put, uh, different places that we can store fat. Um, there's the subcutaneous fat, the fat that's just under our skin. Uh, then there is what's called visceral fat or belly fat. And that's why the, the waist to hip ratio has become so important. Visceral fat is the fat inside the abdomen, and I would add in the chest. But those two types of fat or locations of fat, fat in the inside of the abdomen, abdomen around the organs, that fat is very different than the fat that's just under our skin. And many people understand that the fat inside the abdomen is unhealthy. It's causing metabolic disease, inflammation, insulin resistance. And so that's one of the, really the primary reason so much focus is placed on trying to reduce the amount of visceral fat we have. Well, why are those two locations of fat so differently? Why do they behave so differently? Well, I would submit to you, the reason is that the visceral fat inside the abdomen, around the organs, it is innervated or controlled or governed primarily by the vagus nerve, whereas the fat under our skin is controlled by different nerves. And when a person is becoming obese, they have insulin resistance, high inflammation. Again, it is primarily due to dysfunction of that vagus nerve. And so not only is the vagus nerve dysfunctional and very problematic, but the fat that's being governed and controlled by that nerve becomes very problematic as well. That visceral fat is very metabolically unhealthy. That is the main reason visceral fat is so much more unhealthy than subcutaneous fat. Well, why is this so important? Well, as a bariatric surgeon, I think it's incredibly important for me to understand the effect of the operations I perform. I do bariatric surgery. It's about 98% of what I do. Well, it turns out that when we do these procedures, meaning sleeve gastrectomy, gastric bypass primarily, and we're stapling across the stomach, we're stapling across tiny little branches of that vagus nerve. You can't even really see those branches. They're so small. Well, for some reason, when we do that, it resets the signaling mechanism through the vagus nerve essentially overnight. And there's some process of regeneration of that nerve, the vagus nerve, and there's a restoration of all the signals, sensory signals going into the brain. So it's like turning on a switch again or connecting a keyboard to that supercomputer. Now, that supercomputer can work well. It can govern all the different processes in the body, specifically relating to metabolism, much more effectively. So insulin resistance improves very quickly after surgery. Blood pressure drops very quickly after surgery. Our most common call, I think, after the, in the week after people's bariatric procedures is, I'm on a blood pressure medication, I'm getting lightheaded and dizzy. Now, as long as they're hydrating adequately, the reason they're lightheaded and dizzy is they actually no longer need the blood pressure medications. Their blood pressure is decreasing and they need to stop or lower their dosing on those medications. And it's not because of weight loss. They're not losing that much weight in five days or seven days. It's a restoration of the neurological signals, both going into the brain and the nerves going out of the brain. And so there's a restoration of appropriate metabolic function. Very interesting trivia uh, before I end is, a lot of people are familiar with the circadian rhythm. Daytime and the light, nighttime, dark, you know, we function based on that rhythm, that cycling between daytime and nighttime, really through the eyes, the light from the sun, uh, 
It's very interesting. We'll do a podcast about that. But it's very interesting that the vagus nerve has a circadian rhythm to it. In other words, its function changes throughout the day. In a healthy person who has a healthy metabolism, the vagus nerve activity is very different during the daytime than in the nighttime. Again, something we'll discuss in a, in a different video and a different podcast, but this is very interesting. In order for a person to reverse obesity, diabetes, and these other metabolic diseases, that vagus nerve has to be functional once again. I would argue and submit to you that bariatric surgery is really the only known means of accomplishing that. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day.